Ever since man began to use wood thousands of years ago, it has been known that dead trees weaken and finally fall to the ground. On the moist floor of the forest, softening and disintegration increase rapidly. Total destruction of the wood soon occurs. This is decay, and through the ages it has been a challenge, robbing man of full use of valuable wood resources. Builders of fortifications knew that certain woods resisted decay. Even so, all timbers used outdoors were eventually destroyed. Destruction was most rapid where wood touched the earth or in other moist places. Wooden members such as the rim and spokes of this ancient cannon wheel decayed and had to be replaced. During the centuries that wooden ships have sailed the seas, decay has been a continuing and critical problem. Decay has caused the loss of more ships than all the storms and wars of history. Ships and boats in harbor, with their ports and hatches closed, were especially subject to decay and still are. Decay remains a worldwide problem, destroying wood during its storage and use. Damage is tremendous in wooden structures improperly designed and built, yet much of it can be prevented. If you can keep wood dry or ventilate it, as the old wood craftsmen say, it will practically last forever. These fine homes, more than 100 years old, testify to the permanence of wood when properly used. Modern structures made of wood may last for centuries if built properly, so that decay is minimized or controlled. In this film, we shall explore how fungi cause decay and how the homeowner and others can prevent it. Wood decay fungi destroy incalculable amounts of wood and wood products. Serious decay may appear in standing trees, and it makes many logs either unfit for use or reduces lumber quality. The log may look sound, but in the sawmill, heart rot appears as boards are sawed. The entire core of this tree is decayed and unfit for use. One of our major worldwide tree problems is heart rot caused by fungi. Most people, when they see the word fungus, think of the reproductive structures called sporocarps or conchs. They may even think that by removing them, the decay inside the tree or timber can be stopped. The hoof-shaped conch on the left indicates that advanced decay is present in this section of a birch tree stem. Much damage was done long before the conch appeared and its removal has no effect on the continued growth of the fungus in the wood. In some cases, the vegetative body or mycelium of the fungus can be seen as a whitish mat or layer in the decayed wood. This example of a common heartwood decay shows the localized disintegration of the wood into small white pockets Often in the early stages of decay, abnormal colors, dark zone lines, and changes in wood properties indicate that fungi are at work. If we cut a thin section from such a sample and look at it with a microscope, we see that the fungus body consists of microscopic branching thread-like filaments penetrating the wood. Now, by animation, we see greatly enlarged the filamentous tube-like hyphae of a wood-destroying fungus growing in the cavities of wood cells and gradually extending throughout the wood. The woody cell wall is digested by enzymes excreted by the fungus. By this dissolving action, the tip of a hypha passes readily from one cell to the next leaving characteristic bore holes. The same dissolving and digesting action occurs when a hypha is near or touching the cell wall laterally. The cell wall substance is digested, weakened, and eroded. In this way, the entire wood structure may eventually be destroyed or decayed. 
Now let us enter the much smaller molecular realm where the chemical processes of decay take place. The framework of wood cell walls consists of long chain molecules of carbohydrates, principally cellulose. The hypha of a wood destroying fungus is part of a dynamic living organism. It must have energy producing food to live and grow. The simple sugar units of the carbohydrate wall can provide this energy. But the enzymes produced by the hypha attack the wood structure only if there is a film of water through which they can diffuse. Unless wood is wet, the enzymes have no way of reaching this potential food for the fungus. Through the water, an enzyme molecule of enormously complex structure diffuses to the inner cell wall surface. Here it attacks the chemical bonds holding together the simple sugar molecules of the carbohydrate wall. With the bonds broken, the sugar molecules can now diffuse through the water and into the hypha. For the sugar to be used as food within the hypha, a complex chain of chemical reactions takes place, releasing slowly the energy which the fungus uses to live and grow. Some free oxygen from the atmosphere must be present. At the end of this series of reactions, carbon becomes a waste product and is eliminated as carbon dioxide. Water is the other principal product of this respiration process. This animation is a simplification of an extremely complex process, still not completely understood. While the first part of this action is repeated, we can emphasize that a film of water between fungus and wood must be present for decay to occur. Therefore, dry wood, wood without free water in cell cavities, does not decay. Since free oxygen must also be present for most fungi, completely water-soaked wood rarely decays. Fungi consist of vegetative and reproductive structures. Here we see the vegetative mycelium of a typical wood-destroying fungus creeping over the moist surface of a piece of oak wood. The action is here accelerated about 20,000 times by time-lapse photography. Reproductive structures of wood-decaying fungi vary greatly in size, form, and color. Included among them are the polypores, or pore fungi, the toothed fungi, the leather fungi, and many of the gill fungi, commonly called mushrooms. To observe the astronomic reproductive capacity of these plants, we shall use the common field mushroom. When the cap is placed upon a piece of paper and then removed a few hours later, a pattern appears. Composed of innumerable dust-like particles, these are spores, the basic reproductive unit in fungi. We shall use a common pin as a measure of their size. Here is the pinhead through a low power microscope and the tiny spores, each of which may under proper conditions, germinate and start to grow. Billions of spores may come from a single sporocarp. At higher magnification, we observe three stages in germination and the development of the hyphae. The vast numbers of spores liberated explain why fungi are soon evident where favorable conditions of moisture, temperature and food supply are present. Although much is already known about the wood-destroying fungi, it is actually very little compared to what man needs to know in his ceaseless efforts to combat wood decay. Scientists at forestry colleges and elsewhere are exploring the various ways that fungi attack wood and are developing more effective chemical controls. Wood blocks treated by various concentrations of potentially useful chemicals are placed on cultures of actively growing fungi for fixed periods of time. The decayed blocks lose weight, become soft, and frequently shrink. The importance of preventing decay in wooden structures can be seen by the complete loss of strength in this decayed block. The control of wood decay in moist or wet places depends upon impregnating the wood with effective chemicals. Fungi are variable, 
and a fungicide that protects against one fungus may have little effect in stopping another. Major research objectives are to discover more effective chemicals and to develop improved treatment methods. In this experiment, the block of wood at the right has received preservative treatment. The other has not. And we can observe how vigorously the fungus attacks the untreated block. Again, the action is greatly accelerated. Here is a long-term research study to determine the protective effect of certain chemicals applied by simple surface treatment to porch steps and railings. Millions of dollars are wasted each year in replacing such structures, usually improperly designed or built with untreated wood. It is evident that the untreated wood that rested upon a moist surface is badly decayed. The chemical treatment given to the other flight of steps has protected them for many years. Exact service records are kept so that after years of testing, recommendations can be provided to the public on effective preservatives and methods of treatment. Other research at forestry colleges is concerned with methods of pressure treatment of wood with preservatives. A measure of successful treatment is the amount and distribution of the preservative in the wood. Therefore, the test piece is weighed before and after impregnation. The structure of wood is exceedingly complex and there are many other variables in the treatment. Here the toxic chemical is forced deeply into the wood by means of high temperature and pressure. This superior treatment gives lasting protection and is recommended for wood used in moist locations. The procedure is highly technical, utilizing the knowledge and skills of the biologist, wood technologist and chemical engineer. This is one of two instrument panels controlling the pressure cylinder. Between this scene and the following one, several hours may elapse to allow as complete penetration as possible. Treatment conditions are varied to give the wood the preservative retention needed for protection based on extensive previous records and experience. Important standards have been developed by the wood preserving industry for preservatives and treatment methods. In this experiment, creosote was used as the preservative. Because of its dark color compared to that of the wood, the extent of penetration can be checked visually. Ideally, the entire piece should be impregnated. For many special uses, wood requires this type of protection. For economy and resilience, no material can match the wooden railroad tie. Pressure treatment of railroad ties has proven very successful in protecting them from decay. So too has the treatment of posts and poles. The results of wood preservation research are widely used. Many of our largest industries depend upon regular supplies of treated railroad ties, power and telephone poles, piling and various structural timbers. In this treatment, a light-colored pentachlorophenol preservative was used so that the wood can be painted. There are also many other effective preservatives. An important way to conserve the products of our forests is to see that wood used in moist places is treated to prevent or postpone decay. A treated tie may serve for 30 years or more, an untreated one for only a few years. Used properly, wood is a durable, economical, and beautiful building material, and many of our homes are constructed of it. But the builder and homeowner should take certain precautions. To keep wood dry in use, it must be well ventilated through proper structural design. There should be an adequate space between the ground and the lower edge of the siding, and vegetation should not touch or be close to wood siding as shown here. In front of this relatively new home, the step landing was improperly built directly on the ground and with no ventilation. It is already badly decayed and must be replaced shortly. Condensation, especially in homes or other buildings with no basements, may be important. 
One way to reduce the source of this moisture is to cover the ground in the crawl space with roofing paper or other waterproof material. The timbers in the crawl space of this building were actually wet from condensed ground moisture. With the wet ground covered, the moisture content of the air is reduced and condensation eliminated. From cellar to attic, good ventilation should exist with no permanently closed air spaces where moisture may accumulate or condense. A free flow of air here is important in preventing decay. Adequate louvers are needed to provide ventilation in attic spaces. In porch construction, the floor should have sufficient pitch to allow rainwater to run off and not stand in puddles. Severe decay is also developing where the boards are resting upon the ground. The homeowner should also be alert to detect leaks in the roof. In time, these may lead to extensive decay. The inside of this window frame decayed because water leaked in through broken or cracked putty. Peeling paint, so often observed, frequently means that moisture is passing out through the wall from the inside and condensing on the outer cold wall. If this continues, decay may result. Vapor barrier papers or paints are effective controls. Four years after this home was built, a research biologist found this condition at his own garage door. Enough moisture to loosen the paint will eventually create conditions favorable to fungi. Brush treatment with preservatives gives short-term protection. Superior long-term protection would have resulted by using pressure-treated wood here. Around the home or in greenhouses, the brush treatment of such objects as wooden flats for growing plants will definitely extend their life several years. To ensure the best penetration, a large volume of the preservative should be used and plenty of it should run into all cracks or checks and into the end grain. Another more effective way is to soak the wood in the preservative. State University College of Forestry at Syracuse University offers a service publication without charge on wood decay in houses and how to prevent it. This bulletin describes in detail the major decay problems in homes and their control. In this film, we have learned to think of wood-destroying fungi as our enemies. However, their role in nature is so essential that we could not live without them. Throughout the green world, chlorophyll traps the energy of sunlight and uses it to build cellulose and other organic substances from the carbon dioxide of the air and water taken up from the soil. This is the only source of the energy used by most living systems. The amount of carbon dioxide in the air is very small, and available carbon would soon be locked up in green plants were it not for the fungi, bacteria, and other microorganisms. In the carbon cycle, carbon from the air is used in building the bodies of green plants. These structures in turn furnish food for fungi, and carbon is returned as carbon dioxide to the air. If plant structures did not decay, they would soon pile up and cover the earth to such a depth that life as we know it would be impossible. In the final stages of decay, disintegration of the wood is complete. Structure is gone, but an important organic residue is added to the soil. Also, fungi further enrich the soil by returning the minerals taken from it by the growing tree. Long-term friends, but temporary enemies, the wood-destroying fungi are a never-ending challenge to man. Their study and control offer excellent careers for those interested in the biological sciences. Whoever is concerned with the production of forests and the use of their products, and that includes nearly everyone, must reckon with the fungi and their importance in nature.